Okay, good night, everyone. Thank you, everyone, for joining. We want to thank uh, Rabbi Spetner, the uh, Rosh Kola of the Cincinnati Community Kola, for preparing some Divrei Torah to share for us this Erev Shabbos of Parsha Shalach. Thank you, Rabbi Alt. Uh, I go way back with Parsha Shalach. Um, when I was a, a youngster, about seven or eight, um, the, uh, my, my parents had arranged for a yeshiva bacher in St. Louis um, to, uh, to tutor me in the summer. And for whatever reason, maybe maybe because it began at that time in Parsha Shlach, but we learned through Chumash, the Parsha Shlach, Korach, Chukas, Bolak. I remember we learned through those Parshas together. He was actually a Moroccan bacher. Uh, Daniel Alchiani was his name. I have no idea what ever happened to him. This is, uh, you know, this is over 50 years ago. Um, so Parsha Shlach has always been dear to my heart because it was one of the first Parshas that I really learned at a, at a, a little bit more of an, I don't know, in-depth level, I could call it, but a little bit more than just the way I studied it in school. I want to share with you something new, though, that I learned about Parsha Shlach this year, and then maybe I'll share some old Torah. Um, Something I learned about this year um, actually goes back a little while, a little ways. Um, when the Miraglam, when the spies came back and began, to, just when they first began to say the, their evil report, one of the things that they say, it's in actually in those who have a Chumash in front of them, it's in Parakud Gimel, Pasuk Lama Gimel, that they report that they saw the Nephilim, who were, who were, <clears throat> who were giants, B'nai Anak, Mina Nephilim, they were the children of Anak, of uh, this giant, um, and who they came from the Nephilim, from those who fell from heaven. And we were in our eyes like grasshoppers. This is a little bit relevant for us who are suffering through, uh, who are suffering through cicada season. And, and so we were in their eyes. In other words, which is a very interesting um, expression, uh, the way the Torah says it. Um, if we think about it, it says, and, and we were in our eyes like grasshoppers, and so we were in their eyes. Um, I will recall that of quite some time ago, uh, one of the rare times that the Kolel partnered with, I think it was Israel Bonds. Um, Israel Bonds was bringing in a speaker he was a member of Knesset with uh, uh, Likud, um, and uh, they were bringing him in to speak. I think he was actually speaking at Egal Ziv's house, and um, and um, they asked us, to, "Would we want a co-sponsor?" So we actually, um, because we didn't know the nature of this person, I, I'm trying to remember his name now. Um, he was uh, as a Likud Nick. He is actually quite a conservative person. He was not personally religious, but he had a great respect for religion. As a matter of fact, we actually checked him out um, with uh, one of his co-members of Knesset from, um, from the Degla Torah party, uh, the late Rabbi Ravitz, um, who spoke very highly of him and said, you know, he's, you know, somebody who really uh, respects and we work together with, and you can certainly co-sponsor um, uh, an event there where he's going to speak about Israel. Um, so we did that. And he, it was Parsha Shlach. And he, although he didn't wear, did not wear a kippah during the, uh, during the event, he still wanted, he still insisted on giving a Dvar Torah. <laughs> and um, he talked about this Pusik. And he said, and, and of course he, he made it uh, relevant to the political situation in Israel, but he said that the Pasuk says, and this is really the simple reading, the Pashib Shad of the Pasuk, we were in our eyes like grasshoppers, and there, and we were such in their eyes. And he his point was that the Torah seems to indicate that there's a cause and effect here, that because we were in our own eyes like grasshoppers, that caused us to be viewed by our enemies as grasshoppers. And that is to say that if our per self-perception is that one of smallness and in, the, in illegitimacy, um, then we will also be viewed by our enemies as small and illegitimate. And it's important for us to have the moral cert certitude 
that we are in the right and that we have the right to Eretz Yisrael, etc. That was his uh, that was his message, and that I I had always learned the pasuk like that, and so I liked that he said that. Um, but I saw a fascinating idea. First, I should note that Rashi on this pasuk says an interesting thing. He says that on the words v'chein hayinu beinam, and so we were in their eyes. He says shamanu. And this is quoting Gemara and Sota that Shamanu, we heard Omrim Zelazeh. How did in other words, the 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 the, the, um, the, um, the statement of the Torah really begs the question? So we were in their eyes. How do we know what they were thinking? Right? It's like the famous Pasuk in, in Megillah Sester, right? Vayamar Haman Belibo. Haman said in his heart. I think that's actually one of the ways that Chazal say that or before I should say if it's Chazal, that we know that Esther was written by Ruach HaKodesh. Otherwise, how in the world are we supposed to know what Haman said in his heart? How it's a, it stands on his head? How does the pasuk say Haman said in his heart? We don't know what Haman said in his heart. In, in, a fictional, a, a writer of fiction can can uh, can say what the, the the character had in his heart, but a writer of an, a historical account has no ability to say what the person had in his heart. Um, you can guess and suppose he had in his heart, but you can't say it as a statement of fact. And also over here, how in the world do we? How could they make the statement? The Raglan, how could the spies say that um, so we were in their eye in their eyes? So, so Rashi addressing this question, if you, you know, as a, people always say, what's bothering Rashi? Or what's bothering Rashi over here is how in the world did they know what the what the giants thought of them? So Rashi brings the Gemara that says, Shamanu Omer Zelazab, you heard the giants say to each other, Namalam Yesh Bikarim Kanoshim, there are ants. Walking, walking around the uh, Karim, walking around the vineyard, who looked like people. <laughs> they were surprised. They looked like little people. But they're clearly ants because they're so tiny, um, which is interesting in and of itself because if they were giants, didn't they know that there were other human beings that were not giants? Um, you know, this was not the land of Gulliver, right, where everyone was a giant. Um, unless, of course, that's that was what they were trying to say. Everybody's a giant. Uh, that's what the, the bat part of the false evil report they were giving, perhaps. In any event, one of the interesting questions that uh, some of the Mepharshim were bothered by, and that is, it, it, the, the thing is they say grasshoppers. Why did Chazal say the Mullim? And actually there is a, another version of the text of Rashi, which actually says instead of the Mullim, instead of ants, were in the vineyard, it actually says Chagovim, which of course would fit a lot better. However, I saw a fascinating thing uh, from the, uh, it quotes the Malbim. The Malbim wants to say a whole different understanding of this Pasuk. <laughs> it's really, I, can't, I looked it up, I, I saw it quoted in the Chumash that I like to use. And um, I had to look it up, I saw, I had to believe that the Malbim actually said this. The Malbim works extensively with the meaning of words. And he has a, a, a very, very unusual explanation for how we should understand this Pasuk. He says, he says, means in our eyes, we were like grasshoppers. But in their eyes, we were something different. In their eyes, we were the we were, we were We were a cane. What's a cane? So he wants to maintain that the cane is actually a form of the word of a kina, of a of a of a louse, we were lousy in their eyes, and I mean lousy in as as a slice. That's where lousy comes from, by the way. And for those of you who didn't realize that when we say something is lousy, it's because it's lousy. Um, that's the source for the word lousy. Um, I'm not making it. I mean that's clear. Anyway, so um, so this was um, so in there in. There, the chain we were we were like lice in their eyes, which is even smaller than grasshoppers, much smaller than grasshoppers. That's really what they were saying. And and the Malbim says that what it, just like we say um, when we say um, kan sipor, right? it talks about the mitzvah of shiloh hakan or shiloh hakain. Um, we refer to it's kan sipor, so a, 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 this becomes. Um, this word becomes uh, in the singular um, is chain, just like a, a, a cane, shiloh hakain. As a matter of fact, that, that there's a there, you know there is a uh, there is a, uh, a, a mishnah and therefore a perek in Maseches Chulin called shiloh 
Shlokain. Now, a lot of people pronounce it Shlokain. I will tell you just as a, as a little historical aside for me, I was once dating a girl and, um, you know, very rarely would I, and I dated many, many girls, in case that you don't know about that about me, um, but um, very rarely did I ever speak to the girl's father in Torah, but I, I was dating a girl and her father actually was not a, a rabbi, but he actually did a fascinating thing for a living. I've never met anybody else who did this for a living. His, his, his um, occupation was he had, he had a specialty in, in calculating the time that ships spend in port. There's actually a, there's actually a whole um, area of commerce related to the amount the ships have to pay um, when they're in port and it's related to how deep they sit in the water and there's all sorts of it's a very complicated mathematical uh, um, field I, I forgot there's a word for it but this um, th this is what this gentleman did he worked from home and he worked for the port authority in New York and uh, he was like a consultant and it was he was very very smart in math and that was what he did for a living but anyway every time I took out his daughter a few times and each time I was I was studying that parak of Kulin that summer in the Mir in Mir Yeshiva in Brooklyn, um, and I and every time we had another discussion that we shared with each other about what is the proper name of the parak, is it Shiloh Hakan or is it Shiloh Hakain? And each of us brought different sources that we found. Um, but classically, I know that the uh, Melo Haron in, in the back of the Gemara says it's Shiloh Hakain, even though the Torah says. If you find a kan sipor, a nest of a bird, but that's only when it's possessive, it's kan of a sipor. But if you, it's, when the noun stands by itself, it's kain. So the, the, the malbim says that that's the same thing over here. It's chain is a single louse. It's kinim. And um, actually, you know, that there's a mesechta in the, the last, last mesechta in Seder Kodshim is called people call it kinim but it's really kinim because it's really uh, it, uh it, the you would just like over here uh, 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 a cane a shloch a cane it's the shloch of the cane when it stands when a nest there the, that discussion of that of that is about um the offerings of birds uh, and the missing there should get mixed up in any case so that's what he wants to say and, and there's a pusik in the ashaya that the, that the Malbim says is the same idea. There's also a radical understanding of this Pasuk. None, none, none of the other Mepharshim, including Targum, uh, seem to learn this way in the Pasuk. The Pasuk in, in Kapitel Nun Alf in, in, in the 51st chapter of Yeshaya, in the sixth Pasuk says um, that it's Seula Shemai Meinechem, raise your eyes to heaven, and look down at the land, mitachas, it's underneath. nimlachu, that the heavens, like like um, like smoke, are assaulted. kabeged tifle, tifle, and the land it'll be worn out like a like a cloth, like a piece of clothing. V'yoshveha, and those who live there, kamochein yemusun. Well, now kamochein yemusun, they will die kamochein. So. Um, the um, so he, he he says those who live there um, simply would read it they will also die right besides all these other terrible things and the Malbim says no they'll die like a louse like, oh. you know, like a louse so that's how he and that's how he says the meaning of the pasuk I don't think Targum understands it that way but that's the way the uh, the Malbim wants to understand. This uh, the meaning of this pasuk. Um, just uh, to share with you another another uh, way to read something in the in the uh, in the parsha. Since I'm almost out of time, um, the parsha of course closes with the par uh, parsha of tzitzis, and there's an interesting there's an interesting phrase in the parsha of tzitzis. We say that. Hashem says in the in the parasha, Vasulahem tzitzis, I'll confabing to him, with there was some, they should make tzitzis on the corners of their garments for um, all generations. The Nasnu al tzitzis akonaf, and they should place on these fringes of the of the uh, of the corner, sil tchelas, a a thread of of tchelas, of blue wool, the famous tchelas. But then the next pasuk says, Vahaya lachem tzitzis. 
and they should be for you for tzitzis. Barisamoso, and you should look, see them, or look at them. Hashem, and remember all the mitzvahs of Hashem. Asisamosam, and do them. And it's a very strange thing that this pasuk begins with. And they will be for you for tzitzis. What does that mean? It's like eat matzah, and it'll be matzah for you. What, what, what is that? What is that supposed to mean? Um, make a sukkah, and it'll be a sukkah for you. Uh, what is vayalacham the tzitzis supposed to mean? Right? It's a, it's a, something I say twice a day, and. You know, I can't claim that for a very long time I really thought much about this, but it's it really is a very strange, uh, very strange thing. And the Rashbab in the Chumash on that pasuk addresses this question, and he says that um, he says tzitzis by the um, See, it, it's it's okay. Uh, the Rashbab himself is interesting because. The previous pasuk he says tzitzis in the previous pasuk when it says vanasnu al tzitzis hakanaf pesil techelas and you should or you make tzitzis he says tzitzis are like edges like uh, like like fringes and he brings a pasuk in Yechezkel, come up with tzitzis roshi they, they, like he, like the the fringes of my ha- of my head which is referring to my locks my my hair on my head um, that that's what tzitzis means there. But in, this, in the next passage, he says, is not referring, does not mean, is not translated as, 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 um, as um, fringes. That's not what it means. He says a different translation. He says that the threads of this tzitzis that we referred to before, the, the fringes, it should be a a a a, some, a visual aid for you. Shetiru oso that you should see it. Kamo and he says like the 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 pasuk in Shira Shirim meitzitz menacharakim. He's gazing from the uh, or peeking out from the cracks. Uh, he says that's what that's what it means to look. Lahatzitz is to look out at something. So he says These fringes will be for you uh, a visual aid. They, there'll be a tzitzis for you. There'll be something you'll be made tzitzis, so something you'll be looking at. When you see them, you'll remember all the mitzvahs of Hashem. The second pasuk of Vayelachem the tzitzis is not referring to the word fringes at all. It's all about the re'iyah. It's all about the visual aid that tzitzis provides in order for us to um, in order for us to remember the mitzvahs of Hashem. That's what it means. These fringes. Now, to me, this once again, points out to something which I always point out, Rashi does many times, and I, you find in the Torah as well, is that the Torah and, and the Rishonim and others have a great appreciation for the idea of a pun. They love using lasha nofal alashan, how one phrase can mean something else and, and, and use it, because it's really a pun. That's really what the essence of a pun is, right? We were talking about tzitzis, and then we use the word we choose the word for, for visual aid that is the same word or almost identical word as the fringes, even though the intention, according to Rashbam, is two different ideas. So uh, it, it's just a, a fascinating um, insight into the meaning of the words in this Parsha. Thank you for listening. I appreciate it. Um, and somebody had asked me a question. I just want to see what that question was. Um, someone asked me a question: Is it kinim like the Makkah in Egypt? Like the, like the yes, it is the kinim that we talked about before. Was not the nest birds, but the, the Malbim's translation of Cain is a louse, which is the which of course lice is the uh, Makkah is the uh, plague in Egypt. Thank you very much. Everyone should have a uh, thank you. A thank you, Rabbi Fascinating. Thank you. Thank you. Something thank you different as always. You. <laughs> okay, very good. Thank you very much. Okay, Shakaya. Thank you, everyone, for joining. Shabbos. Shabbos. Shabbos.